Welcome trainers to a breaking news episode of Pogo Fight Club. Today I'm going to be talking about Gen 2, which was just announced yesterday that it's going to be coming out sometime this week. That's in keeping with an announcement from December that said they were going to release all of Gen 2 within the next couple of months. The update says that there's going to be about 80 Pokemon released, which is just enough to cover everything but legendaries and the babies that have already been released, so we should be seeing all of these guys in a while. One of the reasons that I haven't covered this already is that I wanted to wait until it's more than just rumors about stuff like PvP and trading and Gen 2. I wanted to give you guys some concrete information and while we don't know a couple of things about these Gen 2 Pokemon, like their move sets, which is frankly quite important, we do know a lot about their CP and the way that their stats are going to translate into the game. Because Niantic has been really consistent with the way that they've transferred stats from the original game into Pokemon Go using what's frankly kind of a, a complex formula that they are using. So today we're going to talk about which Pokemon are going to have the highest CP and possibly how to counter them based on their types. Some of this information might become a little less relevant once movesets are revealed, but I'm trying to give you all the tips that you need to battle with the best of them so that you will have everything you need to hit the ground running it the second Generation 2 is finally released into the wild. So I'm going to be talking about the Pokemon that appear in the top 12 of Generation 1 and 2. I'm going to be talking about specifically the Pokemon that are in Generation 2 that you're going to want to be using to get at the top of gyms. And this does not include the legendary Pokemon because they're still talking about those are going to be released via events. And from what John Hankey has said, it doesn't sound like they're quite ready for events yet. I don't think they've got their servers up despite all the money we've given them to buy new servers. Get on it guys. But the first Pokemon we're going to be talking about today is Tyranitar. So out of the five main Pokemon that I want to talk about today, there are two that really stick out. These are in the top six of all Pokemon from Gen 1 to Gen 2. The first one is Tyranitar, which was the pseudo-legendary from Generation 2. Out of all the non-legendary Pokemon in both generations, Tyranitar has the highest max CP of any of them, just edging out Dragonite by about 100 points and beating Snorlax by about 300 points. The max CP for a Tyranitar is 3670 at level 40, and it has an impressive attack stat of 251. It's a little bit better balanced than Dragonite is, and it's really going to be a contender in battle. It also has a pretty good typing for rock type. It doesn't have the additional ground type, so it doesn't have double weaknesses like other high tier rock types previous like Rhydon. The other Pokemon I want to talk about is probably the one I'm most excited for. I didn't expect this when the game first came out, but Blissey is going to be amazing. This is number six on the top six. It's kind of comparable to a Snorlax, except that it doesn't have nearly the same attack stat, but it has a much, much higher HP stat, coming in at a max HP of 510. Compare that to the max HP for Snorlax, who's already a pretty big tank, and we're looking at 320 versus 510. What I'm kind of expecting out of this, since it also has a higher defense stat than Snorlax, is that if you can get one level 30 and above, it may actually be very difficult, even with your highest tier Pokemon, to knock it out within the time limit. It may be possible that Blissey's will just hold gems, and that it will take a team effort to actually take a Blissey out of a gym, meaning that a gym with a very strong Blissey and it can't be taken out by a single player. Another Pokemon that's going to be really strong is Donphan. This actually comes in at number 8. It has just ground type, it's a very strong Pokemon in attack and defense, and has a max CP of 3022. That's not especially high but it's right under Vaporeon's max CP by about 150 points. 
It's also just ground type, so unlike other high tier defenders, again like Rhydon, it's not going to have double weaknesses to things like water and grass type. We're finally getting a psychic type Pokemon in the top tier. This is right under Donphan with a max CP of 3000 even, and it's going to be Espeon. So there's going to be another really good evolution to drop into gyms. Unlike Vaporeon, it has a really high attack stat and an even higher defense stat, but it has half the HP that Vaporeon does. One of the highest attack stats for any of these Pokemon, Tyranitar excluded, is going to be Heracross. It has an interesting typing of bug and fighting, which is going to mean that it's really weak to flying type Pokemon. The good thing about that is that the two flying type Pokemon that rank above it in the rankings are Dragonite and Gyarados, neither of which has access to a flying type move. So in order to get the double advantage against it, you're going to be forcing players to use things like a Pidgeot, which is really not ideal for combat in taking down a gym. Those are the top five that I told you that I was going to talk about, but there are actually a couple of honorable mentions in here. So the next thing that comes in is going to be all the way down at rank 18 out of the top Pokemon of the first two generations, and that's going to be one that I'm really excited about. It's one of my favorites. It's Scizor. So, or Scissor. I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. Somebody can correct me in the comments. So Scissor has a max CP of 2801 and has an incredibly high attack power. It's actually right up there with Donphan and just below Tyranitar. So it's still going to be kind of a glass cannon. The stamina isn't very high, but its defense is much higher. And because of the steel typing, it's going to resist a lot of things. It does have one double weakness, and that's to fire. So things like Arcanine and Flareon that are also fairly high CP and fairly high in attack stat are going to be able to take it down pretty easily. But generally, you don't see those as much in competitive play. And really, who powers up their Flareons anymore? Seriously. It takes a little while for you to get to some of the other honorable mentions that I'm going to bring in here, but one that I really like is Ampharos. Ampharos has always been one of my favorite Pokemon, and it's going to have a max CP stat of 2695. It's just below where Jolteon is, but I really like this Pokemon, and I think it's going to be really powerful offensively. Another one that I want to mention, and this is considerably lower in the rankings, I'm not even going to count how low down it is, but it's below a defender like Polyrath, is Steelix. Steelix is ground and steel type, so it really benefits a lot from that over Onyx, which is rock and ground type. It's not going to have those double weaknesses that I was talking about with grass and with water. It's interesting to note about Gen 2 is that we're going to see our first Dark type Pokemon. Dark type attacks are already in the game, and those are extra powerful against Ghost type and Psychic. They deal less damage against Dark, Fairy, and Fighting. But what's going to become important as our first Dark type Pokemon are introduced is their defensive qualities. Dark type Pokemon resist Dark and Psychic and they are weak to bug, fairy, and fighting. So Heracross is going to become a great counter to things like Tyranitar, which is the only dark type Pokemon that's really going to be in the top tier, at least for right now. Being retroactively labeled with the Steel type, Steel type is already present in Generation 1, so you may know a little bit about it, but most people weren't really using Magnemite or Magneton very often, so it may not be one that you're used to. And it's going to become a lot more relevant with Generation 2 coming out. So this type is a defensive powerhouse, as you can see from the chart. It resists Bug type, Dark type, Dragon type, Flying type, Ghost type, Grass type, Ice type, Normal type, Psychic type, Rock type, and of course Steel type while only having weaknesses to fighting, fire, and ground. And another note, it does also resist poison type, and despite what this chart says, it's only going to be a regular resistance because the full immunity was taken out of the game. Another good thing to note in here is that the way that Typing effects damage calculation was recalculated for Pokemon Go. So it's only going to be a 
small reduction or a small increase in power despite this chart saying double and half because this chart is actually relevant to the original Pokemon games and not Pokemon Go so keep that in mind but this does show you super effective and not very effective damage another thing that's cool to point out is while steel type is not necessarily considered a great offensive type it is super effective against ice and rock and will be resisted by electric fire water and steel so i hope you learned some stuff about generation 2 i hope this helps you hit the ground running once they're released live into the wild and let's hope that happens sometime soon as always, remember to like and subscribe for more breaking news and more videos like this, and to get some elite tips that nobody else is talking about that'll help you in battle, because here at the Pokemon Go Fight Club, we just want you to be able to battle with the best of them. Until next time. Shout out to Bulbapedia for the information used in both the Steel Type charts and the Dark Type charts. They were very helpful in this video. And also, shout out to Silph Road for the stats portion of this video. You were very helpful, and I will include links to all of these in the description.